Network presents Football Time. Hey, and welcome to the Football Time Show. We're here for week eight of the college football season. We got a pretty good week, a lot of uh, good conference games this week that'll be deciding outcomes, I think, in the overall conference standings picture. With us, as always, is Dynamite. David, you, you big on this slate this week, Dynamite? Yeah, it's a little better than last week. Uh, some Some good games that I really like. Yeah, uh, you know, I, I think the games are better than what I liked picking-wise. Uh, you know, I, I didn't love a ton today uh, picking a lot of stuff. I, I got a lot of favorites on my list. You know how I uh, despise <laughs> a list loaded full of favorites. So uh, uh, it wasn't my favorite week to pick, but uh, I, I did find some stuff I liked. But I, I did think the week overall, there are a handful of good games in it. So uh, let's kick things off at noon. Wake Forest goes to Army. Uh, Six and zero Wake Forest. Uh, why they are playing this non-conference game uh, in Week Eight uh, at Army, nonetheless, uh, I don't know. Uh, they should have pulled the Tennessee balls, paid this team off, and uh, paid them to go away and uh, scheduled Richmond or, or something here because uh, this one sits trap game all over it. I think uh, yep. noon out of conference. You're coming off a bye, Army. Sitting there with that triple option, it, it just, you know, it, it's only three points for Wake Forest. I couldn't quite pull the trigger on that, but I, I didn't love Army at plus three here, much like uh, last week when we both really liked the Army uh, getting 14 versus Wisconsin. But uh, I just basically can't believe Wake Forest is playing this game in week eight uh, in the middle of their conference schedule. Now, you know, that being said, they probably didn't think they were going to be undefeated going in this game yeah. that it was scheduled. So uh, what do you make of this one? Yeah, this one, you know, I've, I've, I've got a certain pick in this game, but really looking at it, it does look like a trap game. I'd, I'd, I'd probably be more inclined to take Army if, uh, if it was sitting around six or seven points. But just that three, I think, I think Wake's proven. You know, they've been through some tough games. They're a solid team. And Army dropped a pretty ugly one to Ball State a few weeks back. And I don't know if uh, this is the same Army team that was rolling the first four or five weeks of the season. Yeah, uh, they got a different quarterback in there, too. Uh, you know, I, I don't know quite how much that factors, you know, running the triple option. It, it's pretty prug and play that way. Uh, that's sort of why I'm like more, you know, high-level Division One teams probably should adapt, uh, you know, the triple option style because you aren't so reliant uh, on quarterback play. But, uh uh, yeah, uh, I, I just I, I think Wake's offense, Wake Forest's offense, can uh, maybe find a rhythm here and put it on Army. But uh, I, I just have that nervousness where Army seems to play better in big games like this uh, than they do in the you know your aforementioned like uh, game versus Ball State. Yeah, uh, I'm I'm really just thinking Wake Forest is going to ride in here. They've had a. a, a... I believe they were off last week. They were. They're yeah. coming off a bye. So, so they've had some time to prepare for this triple option. So I don't think they're going to quite fall into this trap. Uh, now I could see them dropping a game, you know, later in the ACC uh, schedule, but I, I think they're going to get by this one. It feels very Wake Forest that they end up going undefeated in the ACC and their lone loss is Army, and that's what Army. keeps them out of the playoffs. <laughs> All right, uh, let's move on. This one isn't. Uh, really a game a game but i am curious uh northwestern probably played their best game of the season uh last week at Rutgers, 21-7 uh you know good uh defense seemed to come out after that terrible game uh, versus nebraska i was one week off i'm a little bit mad at myself uh for not doubling down on northwestern i knew that tide was coming uh where we get that uh sort of weird push of Northwestern towards the end. Three and three now. They go to Michigan. This spread sits at 24. I'm curious how you feel about this game. Is Northwestern capable here, or are you looking more at, uh, you know, it was Rutgers' uh, blip on the screen, probably more so like uh, it was versus Nebraska, and it's going to be a blowout here. Well, was that twenty point twenty one point outing? Is that the most Northwestern scored in a game this season? <laughs> I think they had a 
a, a 35 versus uh, Ohio. I, I, I don't know <laughs> how much we count that. Uh, Ohio is barely a uh, division uh, uh, one team right now. But, uh, yeah, uh, definitely the most uh, offensive generated versus, uh, you know, a name brand team. If we count yeah, I don't know. that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they can get the win against Michigan here, but 24 seems like an awful lot, especially with the way both of these teams are playing. Michigan seems to be a little bit more – grinded out, gutted out, kind of went winning now instead of the flashy offensive plays. And, you know, Northwestern's always going to bring the defense. So uh, I think 24, covering 24 and a half, is, is that what you said, 24 yeah, and a half? Yeah, 24 and a half on this one. I, I think that's going to be a little large uh, for Michigan to cover that spread. So uh, maybe, maybe a good pick against the spread on Northwestern here. Yeah, uh, I, I leaned a little bit towards Northwestern on the spread. I haven't put it in my picks yet just because, you know, I, I'm a little gun shy off of being so aggressive on that one versus Nebraska and then eating a 56-7 to uh, game there. Uh, possibly the only game Nebraska has uh, ended up actually winning all season long. They seem to play these close games and then end up losing uh, at the end. Only one they've been able to blow out. Uh, but then Northwestern, I, I did watch a little bit of that game because I was just sort of waiting uh, for this team to do their little turn that they d- seem to do every uh, year. You know, Michigan's coming off a bye. I don't think that helps matters. Uh, But I just feel like this Michigan team is due for a little bit of regression. Uh, You know, they have... They haven't played, like, super, but the defense has been solid, the running game has been good, and the passing game has been a a little bit hot and cold. Uh, So I'm just sort of waiting on that dud to come. It might not come till the end of the year when, you know, the aforementioned Ohio State and Michigan State, uh, you know, light them up. But uh, this one just smelled a little weird here, especially with that big 24-point spread. All right, let's go to the uh, coaches uh, who might not be there next year. Uh, A win here might keep them around a little bit. Certainly what, from what I've seen from Syracuse, uh, you know, their record sits at three and four, but uh, I, I thought they played really, really good football this season, especially with the sort of uh, uh, talent discrepancy they've had in most matchups. Uh, they've been right there in every game. You flip it over to Virginia Tech, and I, I just, uh, last week's game was maybe the most disappointing uh, I, I've been in them, but uh, it, it's sort of been sliding for a, a a couple weeks now. Syracuse at Virginia Tech. Q's getting three here. Uh, can Virginia Tech find themselves? Uh, can Syracuse play well here uh, in a tricky road spot? Well, you know, if, if this – I think we mentioned this uh, when we talked earlier this week. If this game was at Q's, I'd probably be all over taking them in the points here. Uh, but, you know, maybe maybe Virginia Tech's lost a little bit of home field magic, you know, after they had that incredible atmosphere in week one against North Carolina, you know, you thought, hey, Virginia Tech looking good, and then they've just been nothing but pretty much disappointment since then and um, uh, lost a pretty rough one at home last yeah. week. Uh, so, yeah, you know, I don't think three and a half is enough for me to pull the trigger on Q's here, but they've been playing really tough, playing everybody, challenging everybody. Um, so, but yeah, I think uh, uh, Virginia Tech's definitely going to be in the search for a new coach here pretty soon. Yeah. I, I did slight Syracuse in my picks uh, right now, but, uh, you know, I, I'm sort of hemming and hawing on it. Uh, I, I just don't want to be disappointed with them coming out with a bad road performance. I, I'm really scared both offenses. I, I, I don't know what either is going to do here. Um, you know, up until last week, I, I thought Virginia Tech's defense played uh, pretty good football. Now, this is a Really solid uh, Pittsburgh team they played, uh, you know, uh, last yeah. week on offense. So maybe that was a little bit. Syracuse uh, does not present uh, those sort of uh, threats on the offensive end. Uh, Syracuse defense has really been one of the best in the ACC. You know, they've really struggled generating points, but uh, they've been really able to uh, keep games close and uh, tight pretty much every week. You know, they had that three-point game uh, versus Wake Forest. They had the three-point game uh, versus, uh, you know, uh, Florida State. Uh, they had a three-point win uh, versus Liber- Liberty. So, you know, uh, everything's sort of three points. Clemson 17-14. So they seem to be right in that number at plus three. From what I saw last week versus Virginia Tech, I, I thought they sort of packed it in and quit a little bit like they know uh, 
what's going to happen. That coach is going to be axed. Uh, you know, let's get prepared and ready for us all to enter the transfer portal. And, and you know, just every week I see Syracuse, you know, playing hard and trying to win that game. Yeah. They haven't quit on their coach uh, quite yet. I, I don't know if it's coming this week. <laughs> and then I see that. But, uh, you know, I, I'm not in love with it, but I did put it down as one of my picks just because – you know, I think Syracuse is still playing hard here. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, let's go to the weirdest line I thought of the week. Uh, you told it to me on uh, Sunday or Monday, but uh, Wisconsin going to Purdue. Uh, Purdue coming off a uh, 24-7 win at Iowa and are getting three points at home uh, versus Wisconsin, who I, I, I'm not – Quite sure what they've done so far this season. Uh, the six-point win versus Army possibly is the best one on their uh, slate. Um, they do have two wins in a row. They won at Illinois. They won at Army. But uh, I- I'm a little confused at why uh, Purdue is an underdog here at home versus Wisconsin, who uh, has not played good football basically all season long. Yeah, I guess, you know, Vegas isn't really believers in Purdue yet. They think it was just an outlier and drop a game this weekend uh, against uh, Wisconsin. Who? Uh, but it's like easy you said, there. you know, Wisconsin. You what? I said easy there. Uh, but uh, Wisconsin is just uh, lacking, to say the least, offensively. And, and Purdue seemed to figure some things out last week. So, uh yeah, you know, I, I really want to take Purdue here, but I've been burned by them so many times in the past. I'm kind of, I kind of see where Vegas is coming from here on this line because I don't think I can talk myself into that Purdue plus three either. Yeah, uh, the thing I, I, I can talk myself in is uh, it's a little weird, uh, but this Purdue defense has been really good. They grayed out really, really well. Uh, you know, they shut down Iowa completely, forced a bunch of turnovers. Uh, you know, that Minnesota game, they lost that game, but it was a 2013 game. Uh, their defense played really well. It was the offense that didn't come around. Uh, you know, they won a 13-9 game versus Illinois. Uh, I, I thought they didn't play great, but I thought the defense played well in that uh, Notre Dame game. And they also have a shutout uh, of UConn. Now we don't, you know, throw parades, uh, but shutouts are shutouts. It, it's difficult to shut teams out, even ones as poor as UConn, who have actually played pretty uh, okay football uh, for, you know, grading on a curve uh, sort of thing. Keep that in mind uh, for Friday's winning daily as well. Uh, UConn, getting a lot of plus for a very bad MTSU team. Keep that in mind. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I was just shocked that it, they were getting points at home. You know, I, I figure yeah. you want to give this a pick em. I'm a little bit uh, more so, but uh, I just – I wonder who's taking Wisconsin here. Who goes there and goes, I like Wisconsin minus three on the road when they haven't shown really the ability to beat uh, anyone of a, you know, a standard at any level below, above like an Illinois, uh, which is probably their best win so far at 24 nothing, yep. which uh, I don't think was impressing anyone. So uh, I, I just thought this line was a little weird. I'm going to write it. I, I will say I'm a little nervous because it is so weird. Uh, this sort of gives me the feel that Vegas knows something that I don't know. Uh, but uh, I've watched, uh, you know, six weeks of football with these teams, and uh, I, I think Purdue's the better football team here. All right, uh, speaking of lines that uh, we don't see very often or probably the whole Dabo Sweeney uh, error here, uh, I, I'm half curious to go back and look what the, uh, you know, line was in the, uh, you know, opening, you know, months in the uh, preseason line uh, where they have look-ahead lines. <laughs> because my guess is Clemson was probably like a 17-point favorite in like August on this thing. Yeah. And uh, now they come in. Uh, it, it finally sort of has, has turned. Clemson has been a double-digit favorite uh, all season long. They're getting three points here. At Pittsburgh, uh, this is really a chance for Pittsburgh uh, to sort of separate themselves in the ACC and prove uh, they're sort of the main uh, dog uh, this year. They had that tough loss to Western Michigan, but uh, basically since then, they have rolled up points. Uh, they scored 77 on New Hampshire, which, you know, granted, 
Let's not uh, care about that one. But, uh, you know, you got burned by them when they went down to Georgia Tech, scored yep. 52 points on them. And then last week, we, you know, we mentioned the 28-7 shellacking at Virginia Tech. So they responded well. Clemson, meanwhile, uh, has not responded at all on the offensive side of things. So what in this matchup? Uh, Clemson getting three. I haven't put it in my picks, but uh, it, it's very difficult to see that plus number yeah. in Davo Sweeney and not want to grab this right off the bat. And then you see Pitt on the other side, who has never uh, sort of handled this kind of pressure very well. Yeah, I'm, I've been really trying to talk myself into taking Clemson here in this one. I just, you know, it's 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 really hard because Clemson can't put any points on the board. And even if their defense plays well and holds Pitt to, say, half the points they're averaging this year, that still gives Pitt, you know, 24 points because uh, they're averaging probably, you know, 30 to 40 points per game. Now that 77-point outing does help their average a lot. But their offense is playing really, really well. And even if they play, like I said, at half of – uh, their performance, they're still going to put up some points. And I, I mean, Clemson is yet to show that they can put up, you know, three touchdowns in one game uh, in the last three or four weeks. So Clemson really struggling to put points on the board. And, uh, but, you know, them getting points is just almost too good to pass up. You almost think that Pittsburgh is going to fail. This is going to be too big of a moment for them. Uh, but, this that's probably why I'm going to stay away because uh, this would be a big coming out moment for Pittsburgh and, and uh, and their quarterback who's trying to make a Heisman run here. Uh, so, like I said, I could see it both ways. Uh, I really want to talk myself into taking Clemson, but I haven't yet been able to pull the trigger. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I'm a little bit the uh, opposite of you. I'm trying to talk myself out of taking uh, Clemson here. I, I, I'm sitting there. Trust your eyes. Trust your eyes. You've watched these two teams. Clemson is not good on offense. And then, uh, you know, I just see that plus three and I'm like, oh my, uh, you got to give me that. And uh, and then you, you, you try not to look back, uh, you know, in previous games, but you uh, these two teams have played once in the ACC championship game in 2018. That was 42 to 10. And uh, then they played last year in Clemson. That was 52-17. Uh, I, I just, uh, I, I'm struggling not to want to grab Clemson here. Uh, but uh, I just don't know if I can trust this offense. And I, I feel like I take this game, I put money on it, and, and then I'm stewing, you know, halfway through the first quarter as they, they run three straight three and outs and the Clemson defense is shutting down the pit offense, but the uh, Clemson offense can't muster anything. And you're you're just fuming at yourself for not trusting your eyes. I, I you know, Clemson – still right there in the mix in the ACC. I mean, they played so bad uh, that you sort of have eliminated them, uh, you know, out of this picture because they have two losses. But one of those losses, Georgia, the only other loss is NC State. Uh, but, you know, that's trust in NC State's going to run this table uh, through the ACC. And, you know, you they get this win versus Pitt. They sort of put themselves right there in position yep. with a Wake Forest game still to play, uh, you know, to still win this ACC. So it's just, you know, talking left side, right side of my brain uh, in this one and uh, trying to keep myself from putting too much on Clemson, though. They're getting plus in this one. And uh, I I'm really intrigued by it, though. I, I think I'll definitely uh, have this one tuned in uh, pretty good just to see if Pitt can, uh, I, I guess, exercise demons that uh, have been around since Possibly Dan Marino and Tony Dorsett were there uh, to reach expectations. And even that team ended up uh, underachieving. Uh, sadly, cocaine was involved in that one. But uh, uh, next up, the big game out west, Pac-12. Uh, Oregon goes to UCLA. Um, you know, everybody's a little bit down on Oregon because, uh, you know, I, I just think everybody's so brainwashed, uh, you know, from that chip. Chip Kelly and, uh, you know, Rich Brooks era where they just score 50, 60 points for fun. And so when Oregon just sort of churns out uh, gross, uh, unconvincing wins, everybody just thinks they're bad. Now, that being said, you know, without C.J. Verdell and a couple of their other guys yeah. that have been hurt and lost for the season, I, I don't think this is as good of a team as it was when it started. Uh, but they still win football games. Uh, so... 
you know, you're going that versus UCLA, who probably is the better team here. But I think this one sort of has a little bit of, uh, you know, demons as well. I, I think everybody's trying to reach Oregon's peak. And, uh, you know, this is a big game for UCLA. Uh, UCLA is a 1.2 point favorite, depending on where you're looking uh, at home here. What do you make of this game? Yeah, I, I actually probably will tend to uh, go for, go for Oregon here. I think they're a more well-rounded team uh, and, and more consistent team. I think uh, UCLA tends to just completely, you know, disappear at times. Uh, Oregon did struggle a little bit uh, on, I guess it was a Friday night last week. They struggled putting some points on the board. Um, but, I, you know, it's like you said, I think I think this coach here at Oregon is going to be trying to be like, hey, I'm, I'm just as good here as Chip Kelly was, so I, I, can, I can get this big win. And, and Chip Kelly's going to prove that, hey, you know, I'm still the top dog here in the Pac-12. Uh, so, yeah, it's going to be a really exciting game. This is one that's going to be fun to watch, but uh, I can't really get a real good read on, on picking one side over the other. Uh, but I'd, I'd lean Oregon. Yeah, that, that's interesting because I, I think both you and I are in the minority here. Uh, you know, I, I think a lot of people are riding UCLA, especially with this low spread. But uh, I just I feel like Oregon can go in there, uh, sort of push this team around, beat them up a little bit, and uh, sort of find their way to win sort of an ugly game here. Uh, you know, it is a 3.30 game. So they got the primetime slot in the afternoon. Maybe there's a little bit of home field advantage. Game day's going there. So maybe that ebbs a little bit of, uh, you know, favor towards UCLA. But, uh, you know, that being said, you know, we've talked about it numerous times. UCLA's schedule doesn't get any easier after this. They they still got Utah uh, on yep. this slate to play. So, uh you know, even if they win this, uh, it, it's still a tough road here for UCLA. But uh, I, I'm like you. I, I just think Oregon's going to go in there and, and sort of uh, m muck this game up like they've pretty much done all year and uh, sort of sneak away and come away with a win. So uh, I, I'm really interested to see how this one plays out uh, overall. But uh, I, I'm leaning a little bit Oregon as well. Uh, not quite bullish enough uh, to put it in any picks or anything uh, just because – I do think Oregon's sort of beat up here, and they're sort of, uh, you know, patching things up where they can to get wins uh, as I, they can. I think if Oregon can keep the point total in this game under, you know, 45, yeah, uh, I think they're going to be right there where they want it. Uh, but they're going to have to keep this into, a, like you said, an ugly game for sure. Yeah, definitely so. All right, let's move to the – Big 10 here. I, I'm really curious about this game. This game isn't a big game, but uh, I, I was just curious your feel on this one. Uh, Minnesota uh, at home uh, sort of has recovered a little bit since that bad loss to Bowling Green. I mean, the two wins are not uh, amazing. Uh, you know, seven-point win versus Nebraska, uh, which was, you know, a close back-and-forth game. Could have gone anyway. Uh, same thing with that Purdue game, seven-point win, 20, uh, you know, 13. Uh, Maryland, who uh, they were claiming to going to be the national champions uh, going into that Iowa game and then have been uh, – Boat raced <laughs> two games in a row, 51-14 uh, to Iowa, 66-17 to I Ohio State. They're coming off a bye, so I think that maybe they can regroup a little bit here. Four points for Minnesota here. How do you see this one playing out? Because I'm curious your take on this one. I, I, I wrote a little bit wanting to take Maryland here, uh, but then I see those two really bad scores in back-to-back, -back, and I'm like, don't mess with Maryland. Maryland is a dangerous team to bet on. Yeah, I watched Minnesota, uh, Nebraska last week, and I was actually really impressed with Minnesota. I had picked Nebraska in that game. Nebraska has actually played really solid uh, the last four or five weeks. They just haven't managed to pull out wins. They're a little uh, cow like. <laughs> so, uh, you know, I, I, I think that's a quality win for a Minnesota team who's kind of starting to find their rhythm, uh, may have saved their coach's job. I mean, they're five and two at this point. Um, so, uh, five and two or four and two, I think they're five and two, four and two. Um, four and two. Okay. Um, but 
their their quarterback play looked really good this past week, and I think their defense is solid enough. And, and I just don't know if Maryland is is going to be able to slow anybody down the way they've been playing defense. Uh, so I actually I, I tend to like uh, Minnesota a little bit here. I don't have it in my picks just yet, but I may add that one last minute uh, just because uh, watching them last week they looked really impressive to me against Nebraska. Yeah, I, that that's what has me so sort of mixed about this game. I, I really want to ride Maryland, but uh, it, it seems like when they lose, uh, it, it's not a close loss. It's uh, it's always just them getting waxed. And so I, I don't even know how much that four points really factors. Either we're going to get that good Maryland and we're going to have a good game here, or we're going to get the bad Maryland and that game's going to be, you know, uh, 50 to 17, and uh, I'll feel stupid having taken Maryland after having watching them in these two state games. I do like them coming off that bye and being able to prepare uh, for a Minnesota team who, you know, offense is not all that advanced. So you you, you get two weeks to prepare for an offense that's pretty basic. Uh, whether Maryland has the capable defenders to uh, sort of take out their game plan on it. I don't know because Ohio State was running like the same three plays and uh, now, gashing them for 70 yards every time. Now, this game is in Minnesota, correct? Have we checked the weather in Minnesota? Yes, it, it is in Minnesota. Uh, it, it's not bad Minnesota weather. I mean, it, it's cool. <laughs> I knew we were getting close. Yes, uh, but it, it's not anything where uh, the uh, boys from the East Coast are going to <laughs> want to be back on the uh, East Coast Uh uh, there, but uh, yeah, uh, cool, uh, a little uh, crappy weather, but uh, nothing that uh, totally makes you want to uh, fold up and uh, go home and uh, hope you never return to uh, that place. That would potentially be a big factor in this game if it was a little uh, nastier out. Yeah, I, I looked it up. It, <laughs> it It's not anything I would enjoy, but uh, I think Maryland's probably okay uh, playing in that. Uh, though they do have a lot of guys out of uh, Florida, so uh, maybe they might have uh, a little bit more of an issue. All right, let's go to the Big 12 here at Oklahoma State 6-0 and Oklahoma State. Uh, goes to Iowa State here. Iowa State, seven-point favorites. I know you're really big on Oklahoma State. You you singled this one out uh, really early and uh, sent me a text about this one. Uh, you know, the metrics, I, I talked to you a little bit about it, are still in love with Iowa State. They seem to love that uh, big win at Kansas State. I will say uh, getting 33 points in that game, pretty impressive, uh, you know, uh, and then, you know, they had that big game, I, I say big game, big scoring game. It wasn't a big game versus Kansas. So, you know, I think they're thinking maybe Iowa State sort of, uh, you know, figured something out. Uh, before that, they had, you know, 48 points at UNLV, uh, 59 at Kansas, 33 at Kansas State. Now sandwiched in between there is the uh, – loss at Baylor, so I, I like how everybody tends to ignore that. They Of the four teams of those, uh, Baylor's the only good one, very similar to Oklahoma State, and Iowa State lost that game. So seven did seem a bit much to me, but we've talked about it a lot, how this Oklahoma State, State team is uh, – it finds wins, but uh, it, it's been a little Iowa-like where they seem to get turnovers in opportune times, score off those turnovers, uh, just find a couple plays here and there to win that game. So how are you seeing this one play out? Yeah, I think this one's going to play out very similar to that Iowa State-Baylor game. Uh, like you said, Oklahoma State plays that similar style of defense, really aggressive, uh, tries to get the big game-changing plays uh, while they do. Uh, momentum and, and uh, scope of the game. So uh, I like Oklahoma State. I think they're going to keep this thing ugly. Um, and I think an undefeated team getting seven points uh, this late in the season, you, you got to take the seven points. Um, so uh, even if they don't get the win. Yeah. Uh, and the other thing, you know, uh, 
I for some reason thought Iowa State had owned Oklahoma State, uh, but uh, I, I think my memory was shaky going back to like Seneca Wallace in the uh, early 2000s or something. Uh, but uh, anyway, I looked it up and then I'm like, oh, Oklahoma State has owned Iowa State. Eight of the last nine, Oklahoma State has won. Now, not all those are Matt Campbell, but, uh, you know, the last five or six. So they, they've won le- the five of the last six games uh, under Matt Campbell. So uh, Iowa State has really struggled with this Oklahoma State team. Now, that being said, some of those Oklahoma State teams were, you know, highly favored and much, much better than those Iowa State teams. Uh, but it's not a matchup that Iowa State really has been successful in. Uh, so... I haven't pulled the trigger on uh, Oklahoma State yet. It it figures the one time I take them, they probably finally drop their dud. So I don't want to curse your pick uh, too much out of this one. Uh, But after looking up those sort of stats, I I was leaning a little bit more uh, towards Oklahoma State. But uh, I haven't talked myself fully into it. But, uh, you know... This just seems like Oklahoma State has found ways to win all season long, and Iowa State has sort of found ways to lose games uh, all season long. All right, uh, I'm very interested in your take on this one. LSU goes to Old Miss here. Uh, What we're getting from LSU, I have no earthly idea. Uh, What we're getting from Old Miss, uh, I don't know. Kiffin was saying his whole team was injured and uh, might not be able to play this game. I don't know where that randomly came from, but uh, hey, uh, whatever. Uh, Ole Miss, nine-point favorites here. Um, Do we trust this LSU team to uh, run the ball for 300 yards after they, I I don't think, amassed 100 yards in the previous uh, five games before that? Or do we think Ole Miss uh, rolls here? Yeah, uh, you know, nine nine's an awful lot for here. I was I was looking at that, uh, but it's 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 tough to take it anyway because it's one of those games where it can go one way and be really close, which is if LSU is able to run the ball successfully, or it can go the other way and be really really ugly. I mean, this and and a lot of that depends on you know are the players going to be playing for Orgeron? You know, the the announced. Uh, separation from him with him, uh, you know, after a wh- big win, uh, could get the players to you know, hey, we're gonna we're gonna play well the rest of the year for him, or or it, they could just give up on the season. But uh, it's it's still tough for me to take it at, even though that's a really large spread because Ole Miss is one of those teams if they're gonna if their game plan is gonna work to their to their uh, liking, they're gonna win by you know twenty to thirty points here. Um, so. Uh, and I just don't, I don't believe in LSU enough to think they can consistently have, uh, the same game they had last week, uh, against Ole Miss, which, and Ole Miss has really proven to be, uh, more susceptible in the passing game defense than run game. So, um, I don't, and I don't know if LSU can come out and throw it all over them. Yeah. Uh, that's what I, I've just, I can't get a feel on this one at all, which, uh, isn't that shocking because I don't think I've gotten a feel on LSU all year long, except for the uh, Oregon or, or the UCLA game where I knew UCLA was probably the better team. Uh, but yep. since then, I, I, I've been predicting UCLA to play well and they throw out duds and then I've predicted them to play badly and uh, they randomly rush for 400 yards in a game. So, uh, you know, I, I just I don't know what we're getting off the uh, Ed Orgeron thing. I do think nine seems like a. Uh, an awful, awful lot for an old Miss team who, you know, early on they seem to be playing okay defense, uh, but the last, you know, handful of weeks, they just, they, ever since that Bama game, they, they've looked like they've gotten more into their, uh, you know, previous season style of play. Uh, now, you know, that being said, the competition has risen up too. They, you know, Tulane, Austin Pease were who they were playing before that. Then they go Bama, Arkansas, Tennessee, and uh, that's when the defense starts to look shaky. Uh, you know, if I thought everything was normal in LSU and maybe they didn't announce, you know, the firing of a coach, I'd probably be a little bit more bullish on taking this nine. But I just don't know if we're getting, uh, let's play hard for the coach to close out the season or we're getting, uh, let's start to uh, train and get ready for our, our draft combine and uh, make sure we're ready to uh, move on to the NFL here. So uh, interesting game. Might talk myself into the nine by uh, Saturday, uh, 
probably will definitely put it in a parlay somewhere just because I, I think nine's way too many points, especially uh, from what we've seen from this old Miss defense the last uh, couple weeks. But uh, interesting game nonetheless to see how uh, LSU closes out this season. All right, let's move to Washington State, uh, where uh, I, I think things somehow are even weirder than at uh, LSU here. So, uh, coach goes away, assistants goes away. Uh, they won uh, three state games and looked uh, really, really good. Uh, BYU comes to town. Uh, BYU four and a half point favorites here. Uh, you were talking about this game earlier in the week. Yeah, uh, I ended up putting it in my picks list just because, uh, you know. Even if the coach was there, I think BYU is the better team here. Uh, but uh, with all that's going on there, I think BYU goes in there, probably bullies them around pretty good and wins this game. But uh, what are you feeling on this one? Or is Washington State just going to you know, run that run and shoot and do what they've been doing the last couple of weeks? Yeah, I was actually really disappointed with what's gone on up there because Washington State's actually looked pretty solid the last few weeks. They've got some momentum going. Uh, and, and BYU struggled a little bit, but uh, I, I think talent-wise, BYU is the better team. Normally, I would say you know going to on the road to Washington State is a really tough road trip. Uh, but given the situation there, who knows what the atmosphere is going to be like? Um, so I'd probably lean BYU here as well. Yeah, uh, that would be the only thing I'd pull a little bit back. Uh, in Pullman, really difficult place to go. Uh, but one of the teams I, I don't factor a ton of that in is BYU. Um, they're always used to traveling. Uh, their players seem sort of well prepared. And so I, I don't factor it quite as much as I would, you know, uh, one of those Southern like Pac 12 teams coming up here from like uh, Tucson or Tempe or even uh, the California ones out in Pasadena. Uh, so I'm going to ride with this one. Be curious to see how Washington State goes here because uh, it, it, it's it been so – they were really, really bad at the start of the season, really didn't look good. And, and then the last couple of weeks, they've looked really, really good with a – I mean, that uh, win uh, two weeks ago versus Oregon State I thought was really, really impressive. Yeah. And uh, then getting Stanford uh, last week. So, uh, you know uh, – Really a uh, decent sort of play uh, there from them. So uh, should be an interesting game. Uh, I, I like uh, BYU going there, though. I, I think they'll be able to pull this one out, even though they've struggled uh, the last couple weeks. Uh, next up, uh, I'm just interested in this one. Boston College goes to Louisville. Uh, Louisville, who you've uh, sort of adopted as your uh, terrible bad team that you love, Uh but uh, Boston College, disappointing last week. Uh, Louisville, uh, interesting all season long. Uh, this one sits at Louisville minus six. What are you thinking here? Is uh, Boston College just going to sort of uh, fall off here? I, I didn't like what I saw last week. Is Louisville going to maybe make a push here, uh, find some rhythm, and uh, find a way to close out this ACC season well? Well, you know, if, if this had been any other week of the season – that you know didn't have last week's performance from Boston College. I would be all over Boston College on this in this game, uh, but that terrible performance just that just may have been it for them this season. I, I don't know if they're just going to pack it in, uh, but I think if they're competing at their best, which we've seen earlier in this year, um, they 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 have the capability of beating Louisville, especially with uh, Louisville's inconsistencies both offensively and defensively. Uh, in the but, game, <laughs> not game to game, uh, quarter to oh, quarter. Yeah. Uh, series yeah, you'll have one quarter, series. they'll score 21 points, and then two quarters they won't score any points, and then they'll decide to turn it back on again. Uh, so basically, if, if Boston College hadn't performed that poorly last week, I would probably have taken them. But uh, after that, no, I'd have to, have to lean more Louisville, but I, I'm actually staying away from this one. Yeah, definitely so. All right, uh, we'll move on to the Mountain West. Two really big games in the uh, Mountain yep. West this week. Uh, not involving uh, Boise State, so uh, that's always a little bit exciting as a, a handful of new teams uh, come out here. I, I don't know if Nevada's quite a new team. They've always uh, been pretty good. Same with San Diego State and Air Force. But uh, Nevada goes to Fresno State here. Uh, 
Fresno State, three and a half point favorites. Uh, these were two of your favorite teams in the preseason here. Yep. Uh, both have played uh, pretty well all season long. Fresno's dropped off uh, a little bit here. Uh, had a pretty decent win, uh, you know, last week over uh, Wyoming, 17 uh, 0. The offense has been a little tricky, though, the last couple weeks, but uh, really, really big game for the Mountain West here. Uh, Nevada getting three and a half. How do you think this one's going to play out with uh, your two uh, Mountain? West darlings here. Yeah, this is going to be a really fun game to watch. Uh, I, I don't think I've looked at the time yet. I hope I'm awake to watch this Seven one. Seven o'clock. Is that local time or Eastern time? Eastern time. You should be okay for a half. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, I'm really excited for this one. Uh, I Honestly, with uh, as much as I've rode both of these teams this year, I had a hard time picking uh, one side over the other. So I do have a bet in this game, uh, but it's it's not on one, either team because uh, I like them both. I, I think Nevada offensively is the much better team at the moment, uh, but you never know when Fresno State will pull out a game like they had against uh, uh, UCLA and, and just really throw the ball all over the place. So uh, I think it's going to be a really exciting game for sure. Yeah, I, I think Nevada's starting to find their form. Um, you know, I was on them last week versus Hawaii. Uh it's still not quite as smooth as I like, but, uh, you know, they had that win at Boise State, lit up New Mexico State, and then had a solid win at home versus Hawaii. So I think Nevada's starting to find their form a little bit. Uh, I really like them getting plus in this one, but uh, really should be an entertaining game. I will stay up for this one. Uh, should be a fun night in work. So yeah, Stay up for these, uh, you know, Mountain West games. Uh, but next one up, I'm really interested about this one. Also a 7 o'clock uh, Eastern uh, time starts. San Diego State goes to Air Force. And uh, Air Force coming off a huge win at Boise State 24-17. Uh, San Diego State has been uh, really, really good uh, all year long. A little bit of a struggle at San Jose State uh, last yeah. week, but uh, found their way to pull it out. Air Force three-point favorites. Uh, y- you know, you've got to start uh, mentioning Air Force in there, maybe coming out of the Mountain West. Uh, they they really, really played well, and, uh, you know, it, it seems odd to say, but their defense has been really, really good. Yeah. Uh, usually these academies, you know, tend to struggle, especially, uh, you know, uh, versus these high-level teams like Nevada, like Fresno State, like Boise State. Air Force just can't, you know, withstand defensively, but uh, they just shut Boise State down on that uh, side of the ball after Boise State had looked uh, really, really good on the offensive side of the ball uh, the week before at BYU. So San Diego State goes there with their undefeated record uh, versus Air Force. Air Force three-point favorites. What do you make of this one? Yeah, I'm, I'm honestly, I'm surprised. I mean, I guess uh, San Diego State people are sleeping on a little bit just because uh, they struggled a little bit last week, and they've kind of been off the radar uh, for three or four weeks. They haven't really had any big games. They they won some big ones early and then just kind of been consistently taking care of business. Whereas Air Force, you know, they got that big win against Boise State. So they're on everybody's radar right now. And this is at Air Force. But I, I kind of tend to like San Diego State getting points here um, just from their uh, – just the way they performed last year going into this year. Uh, I, I think um, I think they're the better team. Um, now, Air Force, you know, they've – I think they played a slightly tougher schedule, so maybe their uh, experience there will lead them to victory here. But if San Diego State was getting a little bit more, I'd be all over this one. But I think it's going to be a really fun game to watch as well. Yeah, uh, I, I was really hoping this would sort of be a pick em, or they'd uh, sort of lean San Diego State here so I could grab the Air Force uh, even money. But they uh, put the Air Force at minus three. I was also sort of hoping the weather would be worse because, uh, 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 you know, San Diego won like uh, playing up in that mountain time zone, but it's it's going to be, you know, 40s, 50s, 60s, uh, depending, you know, as the night gets cooler. But uh, nothing that would uh, really uh, bother them too, too much, uh, but should be a really, really uh, fun game. I don't know how much uh, offense is going to be in this game, uh, but uh, it, it should be a hard-hitting game. Uh, nonetheless, uh, San Diego State uh, switches quarterbacks here uh, 
with the guy who uh, led them uh, down the field for that San Jose uh, State win. Uh, that being said, uh, San Diego State's uh, quarterback uh, has not factored since Kevin O'Connell was there in the uh, mid-2000s. <laughs> so uh, I don't know quite what a big deal that is, but uh, it is a little bit of something. But the minus three just has me a little bit of gun shy. I, I love taking Air Force, getting points. I'm not quite as bullish on them as favorites unless they're playing, uh, you know, a a cupcake that I know will struggle uh, with that option. All right, uh, let's go to the big rivalry game, uh, USC, Notre Dame. Uh, Notre Dame, seven-point favorites here. Uh, USC and Notre Dame coming off a bye uh, in this one. Uh, Notre Dame's healthy, healthy. in this one, USC uh, hasn't been healthy in, uh, 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 I don't know, since Pete Carroll was there. Uh, but anyway, uh, seven-point favorites for the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. I'm interested in this one because we both have uh, Notre Dame as a pick on our list, I saw. So uh, I-, I know we probably both hate that seven-point spread, but I-, I both think we think USC sucks. So uh, I'm curious your take on this one. Well, my early jump, I got them at six and a half. So I got that under touchdown spread there. Uh, but I, I think this game is, is going to go exactly how I think it's going to be. I think Notre Dame is going to control the game from the get-go with the run game and their defense. Uh, USA is not going to be able to get anything going. Notre Dame will win this 21-7 in that range, somewhere like that, I think. Yeah, I, I do think this has a chance to be a, a pretty good blowout for Notre Dame. You know, I, I actually think the bye uh, sort of hurts USC here, uh, especially since the coach is already fired. So, you know, all those coaches on that coaching staff uh, – probably during their bye week, were uh, making phone calls uh, to look for new jobs since they're probably assuming they aren't going to have one at the end of the season. Uh, I'm curious about the players' focus uh, on a bye week like that when they know their season's already sort of, uh, you know, over and done with. Uh, Do they come off that bye week ready to re-engage into a football game? Yeah, it's a big rivalry game, so maybe they'll get up for it. But uh, I just think them come across country onto Notre Dame. Uh, you know, you saw USC in that Utah game, uh, giving up 42 points to a Utah team. As much as we've sort of said they've improved offensively, uh, giving up 42 points to a Utah offense uh it is a little bit stunning. So I think Notre Dame will be able to find their offense, especially now that they're healthy. And I think that uh, Notre Dame defense be able to shut down this uh, USC offense. So do I love the seven? No. But I think this game has a really, really big chance of being a blowout here in Notre Dame style, even though uh, this game has been close uh, the last couple of years, uh, even as Notre Dame's been the better team. But uh, I think USC's squad has been better in the past couple of years as well. All right, uh, speaking of those Utah Utes, uh, this one's a fun one. Uh, Utah goes up to Corvallis. Uh, Utah's been really, really good uh, the last couple weeks. Uh, I've won some really good money on them. Uh, Oregon State was on a nice little run there, got caught up in the uh, Washington State uh, mojo, uh, lost that game in Pullman. Uh, Back home here, um, Oregon State, Three-point dogs at home. Uh, Does Utah keep this going, or is this just a a, a scary one here as Utah goes into Corvallis as uh, some of the big games uh, still to come out of the south for Utah here? Well, well, I know you've seen my picks, so uh, I'm I'm all over Utah here. I think they've figured it out. They've got their offensive woes uh, fixed, and they're rolling, and I don't think Oregon State's going to slow them down. Yeah, uh, this one's interesting because, as you know, these are probably uh, two of my most heavily bet teams uh, probably the last, uh, I don't know, four years. I I always love betting Utah because I think they're undervalued. And uh, I've really liked Oregon State under Jonathan Smith. Uh, They don't always win a ton of games, though. They've been much better at winning this season. Uh, But they find ways to cover point spreads, and I think they're undervalued. And I I don't think people factor in how hard it is to go uh, to Corvallis uh, you can't fly into Corvallis. You have to fly into Eugene and then uh, sort of bus into there. So it's not always the funnest trip up there. The weather's usually bad, but uh, 
Thankfully, global warming, uh, there's never bad weather games anymore, apparently. Uh, the weather's not going to be all that uh, bad uh, here. So uh, I think that sort of benefits Utah. But, uh, you know, I, I just I can't quite pull the trigger on a three-point favorite in Corvallis here. Uh, even though Oregon State uh, did have that tough game uh, versus Washington State, uh, this one just is uh, was an automatic stay away uh especially since I like both teams and uh, I'll be sad when uh, one of them uh, ends up losing this game. So uh, I'm a stay away here, but I'm really intrigued by this one. And uh, we'll see how uh, Utah goes on the road in Corvallis here. All right. Those are our games of the week. It's picking time for us. Uh, How many picks do you got for us this week, Dynamo? I've got an even 10. I have nine picks this week uh, with uh, two sort of uh, maybes uh, on there. So uh, uh, so it might be 11. I'll give you the two that I'm thinking, uh, but they have uh, sort of uh, connections to them. So people have to be healthy and playing uh, before I'm a, a full grab on that one. But uh, I'll kick things off here. Uh, I'm going to take the aforementioned Syracuse plus three versus Virginia Tech. We got into this game a little bit, and uh, I just think Syracuse is playing a little bit harder for the coach. Uh, I've liked the way they played this year. Uh, I wish the offense was a little bit better, but uh, nonetheless, I I think uh, from what I've seen from Virginia Tech, uh, this season's a wash now. Okay, my first one, we just talked about it. I'm taking Notre Dame minus the six and a half uh, versus USC. All right, well, We already talked about it. I'm taking Notre Dame minus six and a half versus USC as well. Uh, That's one of my uh, favorite ones on here. Uh, I got a couple more in there and uh, a couple more on the uh, pending uh, category. But uh, Notre Dame minus six and a half for me. What do you got up next? Uh, Another one we just talked about. Utah minus three versus Oregon State. I'm going to take the Utah momentum here. I think they're going to be real competitors in that conference. Yeah, uh, team champ ball uh, plays out on the field, uh, Dynamite David, with uh, Utah. Next up for me, uh, I talked about it. I, I'm just taking a line that I think is off. I'm going with Purdue plus the three versus Wisconsin. Uh, if the three is getting plus points at home, I'm taking it. And uh, if Wisconsin wins, I tip my hat and say, uh, good work. You finally managed to score some points in a game. <laughs> yeah, that's one I may end up adding. Uh, but uh, my next one, I'm taking the over in the Nevada Fresno state game over 60 and a half. I think this is going to be a really fun, exciting game, a lot of scoring. Uh, And I'm just, I'm not going to have a preference who wins. I'm just going to enjoy the scoring and get that over. Well, I have the uh, champ bowl in uh, Utah versus Oregon state. You have the dynamite bowl in uh, Nevada Fresno. I do have a play on this. I'm going to ride Nevada plus the three and a half. Uh, I I think Nevada's starting to uh, separate themselves a little bit here in the mountain West. Uh, uh, I, I think they'll go into Fresno, uh, who struggled a little bit of late, uh, and uh, Nevada will get this win plus the three and a half here. What do you got next for us? Uh, next up, another over. I'm going to take the over 55 and a half in the Western Michigan at Toledo game. We didn't talk about this much. Uh, Toledo's been struggling a little bit, uh, but I think them being at home and uh, Western Michigan's offense, I think they're going to get over that 55 and a half. Well, uh, we didn't talk about it because uh, I have banned all Maction uh, in the champ household. Uh, you can't shut down the Maction for the Dynamite Day. Maction has been uh, insane uh, this year. and I have uh, more to come. And uh, I, until we start to move to the Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, even more craziness, uh, we aren't taking Saturday Maction. You'll notice there is no Maction in my uh, fix uh, this week. I just... Uh, I've had enough of crazy results that uh, I don't know which random team is playing good on uh, which random week. So uh, no action for me. Uh, Next up for me, uh, I'm going to ride BYU minus the four and a half over Washington State. Uh, I think BYU is the better team here. And uh, with all that's going on in Washington State, uh, I, I think BYU goes in there and wins pretty easy. All right, next up, I'm going to take my team, the UTSA Roadrunners. Minus seven. Oh, I uh, wanted to La- put this game in our games of the week. Uh, at Law Tech, I think, uh, you know, Law Tech is one of those teams that they they seem to find ways to be in games, but I think this Roadrunner team is playing really, really well. And uh, they're really uh, got a good run game offensively, and I think they're going to dominate against Louisiana Tech. 
Yeah, uh, you you got that, and uh, you got two uh, where teams go on the road to die. So uh, you got Utah going into Corvallis. You got uh, UT San Antonio, who's been everybody's betting darling all season long, uh, going into La Tech. I, I called it in our preseason show, and you mm-hmm. gave me all kinds of crap over the Roadrunners. So. Well, I, I milked them during the regular season. I adjust quickly. Uh, I'm not going to adjust quickly in this one because uh, I am not going into that cauldron dome of death and have La Tech. Uh, backdoor me off uh, some craziness here. <laughs> All right, uh, next up for me, I'm going Louisville, minus six versus Boston College. Uh, I got a little bit of feel here on this Louisville team. I think they're going to close the season uh, pretty well here and uh, maybe uh, make a little bit of run as a, a darling next year uh, for everybody as uh, you know Louisville closes the season and we're like, oh, their offense is great. Their quarterback, uh, who has at times uh, looked really, really good. Uh, so I, I think going into next year, I, I think Louisville will be a team people will be looking at. But uh, I think they close the season well. Uh, so, yes, this six is a little bit gross especially since it probably would have been like two uh, if that Boston College game last week uh, didn't happen. Uh, But I'm going to ride Louisville here and uh, ride my gut on this one. Louisville minus six. All right, I'm going to take the undefeated team getting seven points, Oklahoma State. Yeah, yeah, you and the – Bedlam crazies. You're on the Bedlam bandwagon all the uh, sudden. We've been trashing it for five weeks, and now I think we're both becoming fans uh, hey, of the every, Cowboys. Every time you think they're down, they find a way to get right back in it. Yeah, I know. I, I look for him to be down 17-7 and do some sort of scoop and score, and uh, Iowa State then goes in the tank. <laughs> All right, uh, next up for me, uh, I I wanted to put this game in here, but uh, I I know how you uh, dislike my games of uh, complete garbage teams. But uh, Are you picking UConn? I'm picking UConn, but that's for winning daily on Friday. UMass? UL Monroe, plus 13 and a half for South Alabama here. Uh, South Alabama. I mentioned this one to you. Falling off the map a little bit here uh, with a loss, uh, a in a couple weeks uh, ago at Texas State and then played a bad game. Uh, UL Monroe uh, starting to come together here. Two uh, big wins uh, versus teams that they shouldn't have beaten. So getting 13 and a half for South Alabama uh, confused me a little bit because I'm not sure South Alabama is all that worldly to be 13 and a half point favorites. So, uh, am, I, am I smelling a money line pick from the champ? Yeah, you, you might want to smell that money line pick as well on Saturday because uh, it's probably coming uh, here. I, I'm i mad I did not grab that uh, one last week. Uh, so uh, I, I'm probably going to ride UL Monroe money line the rest of the season and not win one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you missed your window. Yeah, I know. I missed my window. All right, uh, what do you got next? Uh, next up, this one uh, we didn't talk about, but I think this is actually a really small spread for the obviously better team. NC State minus three at Miami. Uh, Miami's, I think, entire starting lineup is hurt, and they've <laughs> and or getting ready for the NFL. And I think NC State's got a lot of play for in the ACC, so I think they're going to come in and dominate Miami. Yeah, that pretty much shows the coaching. Like half their team is NFL prospects, and uh, they can't win football games. So. Uh... Dynamite progression there. Uh, anyway, uh, for me, uh, do we do Notre Dame? Yes. We, yeah, we did Notre Dame, minus 6.5. We're riding Notre Dame, minus 6.5. Uh, next up for me, Texas A&M, minus 19.5 for South Carolina. Uh, I, I think Texas A&M's going to go on a roll here and blow these teams out. And If anybody has watched South Carolina play, uh, they are really bad. You're not uh, buying the Rudy story from their, their quarterback? They're going to make a movie off of them. Yeah, well, they can make a movie off of them. Uh, they probably should put that Vandy game in there as they almost lose that game. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, Texas A&M 19 and a half. I'm not usually big on these uh, big spreads, but I will say I, I'm usually pretty good when I take them because uh, I don't take them all that often. But I, I think Texas A&M probably rolls in this one at 19 and a half. What do you got next? Uh, next up, some more at action. Uh, oh Eastern my Michigan. God. Minus three at Bowling Green. Uh, Bowling Green had one solid game against Minnesota. They've been terrible ever since. Eastern Michigan's been one of the better teams in the MAC, 
and I think they're going to cover this spread. Yeah, that should tell you all you need to know. Eastern Michigan has been one of the better teams in the MAC. <laughs> Northern Illinois only beats really good teams and loses to all the crappy ones. And <laughs> one week, Western Michigan is scoring 70. The next week, they're getting beat by, like, Ball State. So uh, there's no telling what's going on in action. All right, I mentioned two penders. Um Mississippi State, the quarterback is, uh, you know, uh, Leach is saying he's playing, but uh, he's a little banged up. Uh, but at 19, I, I was looking at Mississippi State. Uh, so if that quarterback's healthy, I'll probably ride uh, Mississippi State. And then uh, lastly, if uh, Joe Milton is the uh, green light on the uh, Tennessee Volunteers, uh, I don't really care what that number gets to in Alabama, uh, but uh Tennessee's going to play a fast-paced, high-possession offense with a quarterback uh, who tends to go three and out quite often. So uh, giving Alabama's offense numerous possessions uh, seems like a bad idea. So uh, if Joe Milton's a go uh, at 25, uh, I'm a go for that because uh, Joe Milton's not a very good football quarterback. Uh, So those are my two penders. Uh, What do you got left? I've got two picks left. I'm going to take Wake Forest minus the three at Army. Oh, my. Despite that, despite that you know, you pointed out it really does feel like a you trap. Got all three my warnings. Hot ones here. You're all in my warnings Dallas. are saying you're in don't West take Point. This. You're, you're in Louisiana Tech. But I'm taking, I'm taking the Wake Forest uh, Demon Dinkins to keep it rolling another week. And then finally, uh, I added this one today. I'm going to take Illinois plus the 23 and a half at Penn State. Uh, still unsure on Sean Clifford's health. Uh, they said they've been splitting their quarterback reps into thirds this week between him and his two backups. Um, and so that leads me to believe that even if he is a go, he's not going to be a full go. And 23 and a half is an awful lot for a sometimes feisty Illinois team. Yeah. All right, so those are our picks for the week. Be sure to like and subscribe. Don't miss any of our content. We'll be back tomorrow with our NFL picks with Achilles Reign. We'll be back on Monday with Dynamite David to recap and review the week and our picks. Be sure to catch all our NBA preview shows and winning daily uh, so you don't miss hot picks like UConn tomorrow and possibly on Saturday. A UL Monroe uh, money line pick. Can they keep the trend going? Uh, like, subscribe. As always, Dynamite David, Champ Chesterfield, that's our show, and we're out. Greenlight Network presents Football Time.